there's the hunt shack. I would say it's about a hundred yards. The deer's laying right there. I drove that close to him with a six-wheeler. It doesn't get much better than that. Uh, what he was coming out to is I had nine bottles of Tinks 69 on a stump and he was trying to get downwind of that Tinks 69. And the wind is still blowing in my favor for that hunt shack. And actually this is the first day since opening day that the wind has been blowing in my favor. The wind has been terrible, terrible to hunt in this year and also the hot, hot temperatures. It just turned, it just turned cold two days ago where stuff is starting to freeze up here at the cabin. Uh, but what a beautiful thing this morning. Well, good morning. My name is Tom. I come to you from the rustic log cabin in northern Maine. Welcome to my outpost this morning. Uh, get yourself a cup of coffee. You guys know the routine. Don't wait to be told to get your coffee. <laughs> well, this morning was a good morning. <laughs> you look over my shoulder right there. You will see a 180 pound buck. Seven point. When I first looked at him in the tall grass, I thought he was a nine point. I guess that's still the kid in me. I guess I should have dug his rack out a little more and looked a little closer. But I was more interested in making sure he was dead and looking at the size of that body. I scaled him right now. He's 180 pounds. Doesn't quite get me into the uh, big bucks club. But that's all right. I've been there before. But what a morning, what a morning, <laughs> what a week. Raining, uh, it's been raining hard for three days. Wind, 30, 40 mile an hour gust all day long. Yesterday I was out in that tree stand and just about froze to death because of the wind. I could only go, uh, what, about, about four hours I finally gave up. It was just plain windy, cold, and I've never had any luck in the strong winds anyways. So I just figured I was torturing myself for nothing. Plus, I looked at the weather forecast, and it said for calm, clear this morning. That's what I wanted. All that wind, all that rain, and then have it be calm and clear, and that's what it was this morning. He came, he came where I didn't expect him to. That's for Don Shore. But he couldn't have come into a better spot. <laughs> so, <laughs> what I mean by that was I I cleared a lot of brush behind me between me and the swale grass. And what I was hoping to do was to divert them, not wanting to cross that wide open piece, and instead go the other way. So it would come up in front of my hunt shack broadside. That's what I wanted. Well, what he did, <laughs> he came out, oh, 30 yards down in the swale grass. And then he, he going right up through it. He, he passed my... First shooting lane, so I, I could really see that he was a buck. At first, he had his nose on the ground, just like a rotten buck. And he, and, he, and with that, his head was in the swale grass. And then he lifted his head up, and then I could see that it was a, it was a decent buck. Uh, you know, I don't know at that point whether he's a, he's a eight point. Now you don't have time to check all that out when a buck is on the move like that. You can just see that he had a good rack, and that it's time to shoot him. You know, he's not standing there. He's not standing there broadside, sticking his tongue out. He's on the move. Uh, and, and all I had, I had like these 20-foot uh, shooting lanes that I put in. And I put in th uh, three of them with a clump of trees in between. So I can situate myself 
by the time he gets to the other shooting lane, then I, I can take a decent shot. Here's my hunt this morning. Shooting lane number one is where I saw him. This is what I call an ambush site. Uh, to the left of that number one is where I was expecting all the deer to come. And as you can see, I can't see a thing. Well, at the same time, neither can they. So it makes for a great ambush site. This is how I set up my tree stands every time. Always have a good thicket on one side for the ambush. So he came out into shooting lane number one, and then he crossed that little patch of trees that I left there between shooting lane one and shoot, shooting lane number two. You see that little patch of trees? Well, anyways, by the time he got to shooting lane number two, which is the green dot over there, that's where I shot him. So I saw him at the red dot, and I shot him where the green dot is, and that's exactly where he dropped. And as you can see, all that swale grass, you would not want to lose a deer out in there. And I have one more shooting lane. It's not in this picture, uh, but if you keep going another 50 or 60 feet, I've cut another shooting lane that is approximately the same way, 20 feet wide, uh, just to give me, I can, I can see the deer coming through all of those lightly sparse trees in there. So by the time they get to the other shooting lane, I am set uh, for a really good ambush shot. And that's exactly how it all played out this morning. I couldn't be happier with this tree stand. I wanted to share this site with you guys. The other thing I wanted to point out in this picture is number three and number four. Number three is all of the fir trees in that area that was three to four feet tall. You can see they all look like they had a haircut. That's because they did. I wanted to cut off all the tops, and that will make them grow fat and fluffy. And what I want to keep there is I want to keep a nice hedgerow of fir trees that the deer feel really safe and secure in. So I, on my property, I am cutting off the tops of all fir trees to make this happen. And number four is the maple whips that I cut down. Now, you can't see all of them in this picture. To the right, I had I, I cleared, oh, I don't know, at, at least two, 200 square feet of maple whips that was just plain not good for bullets and not making for a really good shooting lane. Uh, so that all came together with a little bit of trimming out there. And I'm still going to go down and cut a little bit more out of shooting lane number one. I'm going to leave that first standing tree, and then I'm going to cut out the next two because I might have had a better shot right there than I actually had over in number in uh, shooting lane number two. So uh, that's just my plans for this spot. I wanted to just point that out, different things that I've done around this tree stand that most people believe that you can't get away with uh, around any tree stand leading up to deer season. Uh, but what he did was he stopped in between. <laughs> so I kind of had to uh, pick and choose my shot right there to get down through the trees that he did stop in. I could still see him broadside all of that, but I wasn't taking any chance. I didn't want him to travel in that swale grass because, man, if a deer gets out in there, what a nightmare it would be to track him down. You know, there's so many deer tracks out there from them, especially the, I was just out there getting them, and they're out there bedding down must in these windy, windy days, so. But what he was doing, I, I put out uh, uh, nine bottles of Tink 69 on one stump. I've got a coffee hook that I screw into the stump, and I hung all nine bottles right from that one stump. And what he was trying to do, because finally, this whole season's been crappy. And finally, it's been crappy because of bad wind, hot days, uh, hot wind, just terrible, terrible weather for hunting. And uh, finally, this morning, I, I had the wind in my favor at two miles an hour. Maybe it was supposed to get up to four miles an hour. So the wind was, was blowing out into the swale grass. So he came, you know, he, what he was trying to do was get around the back of that 
I'm pretty sure the Tink 69. Because he didn't know I was there. He didn't care about me. Uh, not at all. Uh, I think he was trying to get out behind the uh, Tink 69 and see where that smell was coming from. Or see what was making it. He found out all right. It was a uh, it was it was a thirty odd six. <laughs> so, anyways, but then he dropped like a ton of bricks, which I was glad. I was glad to see that because, like I said, uh, getting out in that swale grass. Oh my goodness, what a what a mess that would be. So, anyways, he he stopped where I wanted him to stop. That was good, and then. Uh, You know, <laughs> so now the fun part. Now I got well, fun. I I hooked onto him with a six wheeler. There he is. It was I was hoping I could find him easy out in this swale grass. Glad he dropped right in his tracks. It's not easy walking out here. And lots of places for a buck to hide. Done deal, he's going home.
I got him dragged out, dragged out to where I could load him into that little trailer. And that couldn't have gone any easier. My whole plan, cause I can't, I drag, I can't drag him. Not now. I used to be able to drag deer for long ways. Uh, I couldn't even hardly drag him to a good spot for a picture. But anyways, enough of that. But anyways, I, I hooked onto him with the winch on the six-wheeler and winched him over to where I could then right onto the trail. And then I backed right up to the uh, hunt shack where I had the other trailer. I didn't take out the camera, but I'll tell you what, that was the easiest deer I ever loaded in a trailer. What I did was uh, I flipped the trailer right over the top of him, and then I tied his rack to the tongue. And then I used the trailer as a fulcrum and just tipped it over. And he came right up with the trailer and flopped right in. Uh, never, never tugged on it a bit. And then drove him over here and then winched him up onto the meat pole with the uh, come along that's on the meat pole. But pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Pretty sweet, because we supposedly got a big snowstorm coming tomorrow, so things were going to start getting uh, pretty nasty. <laughs> I don't like to hunt in the snow if I don't have to. I, and I don't like hunting in the, in the you know, below freezing if I don't have to either. I'm never happy. I just, uh, I don't like it 80 degrees when I'm hunting, and I don't like it zero when I'm hunting. <laughs> But if any of you ever subscribe to this channel, this channel is all about hunting and fishing. Uh, welcome to Beaver Creek. Beaver Creek is a project that I put together uh, starting last year. This is 15 acres of land a mile from where I can park the pickup. I'm way up in on a swamp. Most of my land is wetlands, swale grass, and all of that. I got lots of videos on building this little cabin. But I built this little cabin uh, exclusively for, for deer hunting and bear hunting. And I am off to a good start. Last year, I mean, I built the cabin right up into November. I was still building the cabin right now. Because uh, you, you just can't stay back in here without some kind of shelter. So last year, I pretty much had gave to the building project. And then this year, the building project was all these hunt shacks. So from this point forward, hopefully we can have some luck. And I got a really good feeling that that's going to be a really good stand for many, many years to come. Just the way it's located, it's located on a funnel. I'm on the bedding area where they will feed at night. And then come back here to this swale grass to bed in the warm sunshine. So, but this one here, was he was, he was, he was looking for a girlfriend. But what a nice deer. Big body deer, heavy, heavy. Uh, another, another few pounds, he would have put me over the, the uh, 200 pound. That would have been nice. But it's finally nice to see something hanging from the meat pole. Any of you who's been watching this channel for the last six months, uh, we've been putting in, the, putting in the hunt shacks and getting that meat pole built. And it really is nice. To see a buck hanging from the meat pole. <laughs> so anyways. A little after 8 o'clock this morning. Through them trees is my tree stand, the new one for this year. I'll have to, uh, it's at least, I would say, a hundred yards shot from here back to there. And at a little bit after eight o'clock this morning, this big bodied buck, I can't wait to get him on the scales and see what he weighs. There's the tree stand, brand new. The buck was coming across.
We're headed into the hunt shacks. We're headed into the hunt shacks. To put out the tree stand ladders. Uh, oh, the tree stand ladders. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> you guys have one last sip of coffee with me, and I'll see you next week.